Next, we're going to record a purchase. When you're recording a purchase, it's not necessary to pay for the purchase in new cash at the same time as you record the purchase itself. In other words, you can receive the goods now and then pay for the goods later. The way that you would do this is you go to vendor and you record a bill. And the thing about a bill is that it means it identifies that you made a purchase, but it doesn't necessarily indicate that you've actually paid for it. When you're writing in the bill information, this is in a vendor's bill, you're writing whatever the vendor's invoice number was. Let's say it's 1300 And let's suppose we're dealing again with our friend Cash. You can write another information here also that will help you identify what the invoice is. Here you would indicate a customer. If you're doing this for a specific customer, you would indicate the customer over here. And all this information can also be information put in later on also. Here's some chargeback. Now let's suppose that I bought, I don't know, a thousand units of paper clips. In that case, it would be called material. What you can also do is you can call it a project. These are office supplies, so I'm going to go to expenses. Office supplies. And there I have my first item. Now, when you hit tab, it goes to the next item, and the total appears right here. Next, you save, and then you post the invoice. So click post. And the invoice has now been recorded in your books. If you look here, you'll see now I now have office supplies of 500,000 a lot of paper clips. One other thing that will appear here in the trial balance is there'll now be a liability for $500,000 because you owe $500,000 to this particular supplier. Next video to watch is how to pay this invoice.